All right, so this is probably the weirdest picture I've ever seen of mushroom spinning. So one of the uh, greatest questions in mycology is, is this cobweb mold? What's up, mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, I'm going to be diving into a little bit more of problem and solution topics when it comes to mushroom farming. So I get a lot of questions about, you know, how to resolve specific problems. People email me all the time, and I'm planning to do a dissection of different problems that I come across. And if you have a problem of your own that you'd like questions answered, leave a comment in the section below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe and hit that like button. It helps our channel grow so we can answer more questions like these. Okay, so we've got Eric's post on pink oyster fruiting in the bag. So first timer here, my pink oyster block seems to be pinning like crazy before the bag is fully colonized. I was expecting a dense white block, used chopped straw as my substrate, inoculated with rye grain I created with liquid culture almost two weeks ago. Is this ready to go in the Martha tent? Any advice would be appreciated. So I'm looking at this bag here and my number one concern is that it seems to be overhydrated. So you can tell that the mycelium was struggling to colonize the bottom half of the bag and it's in response, I believe, that it's starting to fruit because it's a last ditch effort to produce mushrooms. Um, normally, you would have a nice bright white thick block. Another indication that it's oversaturated is that there's a lot of condensation on this bag. Um, normally, you would see some fine misting going on. Um, but there's like definitely some large droplets happening. Okay, so if this was me to try and save it, um, I think it's ready to go into fruiting. You might not have the results that you want, but there's a learning curve when it comes to mushrooms. So I would go ahead and fold that top flap over, cut a slit and lay it in the Martha tent. You should get mushrooms that form wherever you make the, the cuts in the bag. So one caveat I have is you shouldn't chase the pins that are already started. I think that they were just reactionary to the over moisture content. Um, but I think that if you put it into fruiting and maybe run your tent at 65 to 70% humidity, you can slowly have that moisture evaporate and still get good mushrooms. But this is a great example of an oversaturated bag and the next go around just do about 10 percent less water and you should be fine all right so this is probably the weirdest picture i've ever seen of mushroom spinning brad posts what's going on with my blue oysters they were looking pretty good had to leave town for a couple days came back to this so for any of you who are watching it looks like a coral reef with a bunch of tiny nodules on it and a few promising uh, mushrooms growing in the background. Appreciate any insight. So just being based off this picture, to me, it looks like there was mushrooms that fruited. They had poor fresh air exchange because they're very long and tiny little caps. They almost look like, uh, like cheese puffs or curly cues. So there's something going on with the fresh air exchange. That's number one. Number two, they mentioned that they went out of town on vacation. So I do not recommend fruiting mushrooms when you're not gonna be there to pick them for this reason. Mushrooms will fruit in a few days time. So, you know, you have frame of a few hours sometimes to pick these mushrooms before they go bad. Uh, one tip that I have, if you are going out of town, you can always put your ready to fruit block in the refrigerator and then pull it out when you get home. And then that way it stalls that fruiting process. So that's what I would have done. Now back to this picture, it appears to me like there is a flush of mushrooms that kind of emerged, died back, and now a new flush of mushrooms is pinning on top of that. Um, 
to me, it's questionable if these mushrooms are, are going to taste good. They're probably going to be very bitter. And if there's any mushrooms that even come out of it, maybe those back few that are emerging would be, uh, you know, promising. But what I would do is rip this whole top off the mushroom and start over. Um, as long as you preserve the mycelium underneath this mat of ratty pins, then you should be able to get a fresh harvest, maybe increase your fresh air exchange so that your CO2 is below a thousand PPMs and uh, just pay attention so you can pick them at the right time. So one of the uh, greatest questions in mycology is, is this cobweb mold? Um, so I'm looking at this really uh, early on grain jar of popcorn. There seems to be some mycelium that's forming at the bottom of the jar. And then it looks like the, it runs directly from the top of the jar downward. And the question is, is this cobweb mold? I believe that this is uh, very early to assume that it's contaminated. I don't know. Um, there's not, I guess, a timeline on this post of when it was inoculated, but let's say it's been a week since you injected spores or five days if you've injected a liquid culture. Typically, the mycelium is going to start off faint and then it's going to absorb the nutrients from the grain and thicken up over time. So in this case, I would be patient and just give it, you know, another week or so. Cobweb mold will look gray. It will feel like more resistant. If you took a scalpel and scraped the surface, um, you can check because if it's still sterile mycelium, it won't do any damage. But if it's cobweb mold and you take a, a scalpel blade and run it across the top of that surface, it's gonna feel almost like carpety. Like there's a lot of resistance to cobweb mold. Um, also, it's gonna have a musty odor and it's going to have like tiny little droplets on the top as opposed to mycelium when it's growing in the substrate, it's going to have a really thick leading edge. So those are some of the indicators that differentiate cobweb mold versus mycelium. Oftentimes cobweb mold will also be slightly grayer. And I know that it's hard to tell um, early on in grain spawn because you know you don't have a white surface to identify it against. But I think giving this jar about a week's more time, if you're super you know, uncertain, then you can take this into a still air box and try scraping it with a scalpel and that'll give you much more idea if this is cobweb mold or not. Thanks for watching The Mushroom Doctor. If you have questions of your own, leave comment below or hit me up on Instagram. Until next time, much love.